Okay. Good. Minasan, k o m b a w a Bokwa Yanaga Edson Sandes, Bokwa Brazil Jindes, Boko no Jichan Tobachan Nihon Dindes, Ima Bokwa Ego Hanas. Domo Regato Gozemas. And、uh, I usually speak very fast, so I'll try to speak slower. And we're going to talk about,、uh, a bit about Kubernetes, especially if you're already familiar with some Docker concepts. So thank you, Fernando, for explaining that. I'm a director of developer experience at Red Hat, and my Twitter handle is at Yanaga.、Uh, I'm also a Java champion and a Microsoft MVP. And since we're discussing Kubernetes, it's very interesting that Fernando mentioned some challenges running uh, uh, Docker applications. And the nice thing is, Docker changes the, the, the scenario uh, where uh, developers are trying to deploy their application into production. But when they they, these same developers try to use these containers in production environments, they faced many different challenges. Luckily, Uh, approximately three years ago,、uh, Google and Red Hat they started to develop an open source project called Kubernetes, which is based on the same technology that Google uses to deploy approximately 2 billion containers per month. So, most people think that if Google can deploy 2 billion containers per month, maybe your company can deploy their 50 containers per week like, in a safe、uh, way. So, uh, and uh, Kubernetes has become the de facto standard. So,、uh, most, if no, most, no, all of the major cloud computing providers these days they already support Kubernetes. So, we'll I'll try to explain some、uh, major concepts of Kubernetes so you can start、uh, playing with that yourself. And the first one is that、uh, traditional container orchestration using only the abstraction of containers. Which I'll use a、uh, Huayo to represent that. But Kubernetes uses the concept of a pod. And I know that for native English speakers, which is not my case, for example, pod might seem like a, a real simple concept. But after talking to some people, I just learned that pod in English、uh, represents the, the collective of a、uh, group of whales. So after we realized that a pod in English means a group of whales, It's much easier for you to understand that a pod in Kubernetes is a group of containers. So every pod might have one or more containers, at least one, but you can have two or three. In fact, later, Sebastian probably will show you、uh, that you can have more than one container、uh, and how you can use that on the same pod. So I won't explain much more. But、uh, most applications, when you start developing there, you have one container per pod. But at, as your complex, complexity increases, you might add more than one container on the same pod.、Okay? And I'll let Sebastian explain that to you. So, why should we use pods for resource management, for resource sharing, inter process communications? And I'll just.、Uh, also, Kubernetes uses some、uh, labels to organize your pods. Because、uh, you might think that you're only deploying your application into production, but as your uh, uh, environment evolves, you, you will be deploying your application, the other team will deploy in another application, but all on the same cluster of servers. So it's very nice for you to be able to organize you saying, oh, these pods are from this application, these other pods are from, from the database, these other pods from the other team. So, you can easily apply your commands on top of the labels. So, think about labels the same thing as if you're using Gmail, if you apply labels to your containers、uh, to organize them. Labels on Kubernetes、uh, fits the same purpose. Also, in Kubernetes, you have the concept of replica sets. Which means that sometimes、uh, you, don't, you, don't, you don't want to know where your container is running into production, right? You just say to Kubernetes, I want at least three instances of this container running into production. Then Kubernetes automatically mal- mag-、uh, manages that, so that it will replicate these containers in、uh, at least three instances of these containers. And if this node goes down, Kubernetes will know, oh, this host is down. And, but this application needs three instances, so it will automatically start a new container instance in another host. You can also, with replica sets, apply some very nice features like、uh, you can say that my applications need a very fast hard drive. 
In fact, it needs an SSD. But only some uh, servers on your, uh, on your server farm uh, uh, have the SSD. So Kubernetes will know that this application needs a very fast, uh, fast I.O. So it will only instantiate these, co these containers from this application on the servers that have SSD. So Kubernetes is smart enough to do that with the replica set and allows you to, s if your application has a spike on demand, Kubernetes can uh, like increase the amount of uh, instances that your application have and can also decrease them when your, when your demand decreases. You can also use the concept of uh, deployments, which is what's a feature contributed by, uh, to, by Red Hat to the Kubernetes core, which means that you can evolve your application version one, version two, version three, and if you have a problem to production, you can roll back your version to the previous version with just one command, making it very simple. Also, you have the notion of services, which means that you have transparent access through your cluster. When you have your application, you, you don't know where your application is running on the service. On the other hand, you need to access this application if you're using like uh, HTTP to access that. So what does Kubernetes do? Kubernetes creates a, an abstraction called services. You will call the service endpoint, and Kubernetes will automatically distribute the load of the service between the multiple instances that you have in your, in your backend. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, Kubernetes has this concept of health checking. You need to know, uh, you have health checking and readiness uh, checking uh, probes too, just for you to be able to know if your application is running properly. Right, uh, so Kubernetes will automatically detect, oh, this application is too slow or is not behaving properly. If that's the case, Kubernetes will automatically kill that instance and start another instance in the same host or in another host, depending on your replica set configuration. And just to give you a very quick uh, uh, sense of how does it work with a Kubernetes, I have here on my machine a Kubernetes cluster running so uh, what i want to do i want to use the interface to be deploying that so here i have my application some applications running which is basically i have here application saying blue and another saying green if i want to deploy a new uh, application i just say deploy i can give the image name and say yanaga master and i'm going to deploy a purple application. So once I go to the Docker Hub and get the information from this image, so you build your Docker image with your Docker commands and everything else, you push this image to the registry. Now it's available and I want to deploy that and I'll, go, I'll give a name, I'll call it purple. There's already one, so purple too. Oh, sorry. Just because I was testing that before, and deploy. So I uh, just deployed this application. What is that? Oh, it gave me this name. So you can see here that I have one pod. Uh, if I want to access that externally, uh, this is a feature of OpenShift, but I'll just create a route for you to be able to see that. And if I check here, it should be purple. I only have one instance of this application running, but if you want to scale, oh, Kubernetes can scale your application. You just say how many pods do you want, and you get three. And once they are ready to receive requests, you will see that the, the interface comes to blue. And if you come here, you can keep hitting refresh. Now, how does it work? Suppose that one of these instances is failing. I'm going to kill one of these instances. You will see that Kubernetes will automatically create another one for me. So I'm going to be on the CLI. Get pods. So I'm pick one. I'm going to pick one of these pods and kill it. So I just killed the pod. Kubernetes detected. Oh, uh, this pod died. Created another one. Added to the cluster. So my application is ready to behave. Right. And another interesting feature that you can add. This one is particularly from uh, OpenShift, but many people enjoy that. I have here the blue deployment and the green deployment. And sometimes you want to perform blue uh, green deployments to or canary deployments. 
And uh, in the past, you, you used to have a, like an HA proxy or an Nginx instance to be able to load balance between these deployments. If you have, the, you can create a uh, resource called uh, root. And if I want to create like a blue-green deployment, I can just say here, I want to do, perform a blue-green deployment with service blue. And I can split the traffic between blue and green, for example. And I want to give 50-50 to each one of these deployments. I just go through the interface. I create that. And once it's created, I just go hit here blue-green, which will show blue. And I'll open another browser. If I'm lucky enough, I'll open my Safari. And it will be blue. Of course, it didn't work. And now I'm going to another, another browser. And it's green. OK, so it will be 50-50. And you might be, if I keep hitting refresh here, you always hit green because the OpenShift router is by default sticky. So a common session, do you have sticky sessions on top of Kubernetes and OpenShift? Yes, you do. And that's the be default behavior. If you want uh, round robin road balance, you need to change the configuration because the default is stickiness, because it's more suitable for legacy applications. And that's what I wanted to briefly introduce to you. I think I even saved some time, right? And minasan domorigato gozaimasu.